You see, the great secret, Eliza, is not a question of good manners or bad manners or any particular sort of manners, but having the same manner for all human souls. The question is not whether I treat you rudely, whether you've ever heard me treat anyone else better. Just happen to be do re mi do re mi do re mi fa so la ti You all killed him and my brother and Rip. Not with bullets and guns, with hate. Well, I can kill too, because now I have hate. The price of freedom is high. It always has been. It's a price I'm willing to pay. If I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet I'm not. Deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy the fear to attack. Warmy. A política e a poesia são demais para um só homem. Asma Ali, mas o que é raro ali o sonho da vez não é o harm, o é ele a vez que não já é o harm. O é raro é que não se livre da, mas que não se livre da, mas que não se livre da. که متاسفانه اونم نشدش که فیلم بعدی هم که داشتیم با آقای رسولوف کار میکردیم تو همین خونه بودش بازم لوکیشن واحد که حدود سی درصد فیلم رو گرفته بودیم که یه دفعه ریختن خونه تمام راشا رو اینا رو بردن و به من بود که آدم تعریف کنه که فیلم نمیساخی Well, I'm not scared to face my creator I will have a big space there, I'm sure But it's just so unfair Getting that little injection without me giving a fair fight the chance to defend myself. There's no more further action legally. I'm just waiting to be scheduled for my execution. Ever since the aftermath of the past world wars, different cinema movements began to rise. In our generation, almost all of these movements are still relevant, but are not practiced. We live in today's generation where superhero genres like The Avengers, Justice League, almost every Michael Bay films, fantasy, and sci-fi are dominant. Thus, it is considered to be first cinema, wherein European art houses are the kind of films that rejects Hollywood formula but still adapts the expression of the author. But nevertheless, it's not really that far from Hollywood formula. You can see patterns in film language that still parallels to what we usually see in Hollywood films. While first and second cinema are more of interpretations in the current world, it is still an idea that lacks the push and motivation of the audience to learn from its lessons. Even the writer or director don't intend to make the audience realize themselves and change after watching the film. That idea is applied to the next movement that we're gonna be tackling about. Third cinema basically rejects all the rules from the first and second cinema and is striving to transform its audience. You can say that it's very close to a propaganda, but it actually aims higher, revolution. The biggest aspect of third cinema is its national identity and questions the political side of the message. It is a form of political awareness amongst the oppressed amidst a heavily censored landscape. Its separation from the typical commercialized Hollywood gives the movement a powerful gesture to revolutionize the film industry by moving away from the typical formula of mainstream. Third cinema suffers from being independent, having their way without state funding and even exhibitions. The movement originated in Latin America in between the 60s to 70s. A pattern was formed also from other cinema movements since the two world wars occurred, and it became the ground zero for different waves of cinema movements around the world. The idea is to break away from the capitalistic motive of the Hollywood filmmaking and to give justice to what the mainstream media isn't showing or distracting from its viewers. Fernando Solanas and Octavio Gatino, the two Argentine filmmakers, made a documentary called La Hora de los Hornos, or Hour of the Furnaces. Ironically being called as third cinema filmmakers, they made the documentary as an act of liberation rather than calling it as a film. 
They use different kinds of film language as their arsenal in battling their way out to awaken their viewers' perspectives in the current issue. With great deal of being independent, they form the group called Cine Liberation. Formed in the 60s, the group conquers their way since the 68 revolution in France, which caused civil unrest. They protested against the government of President Charles de Gaulle. Third cinema filmmakers were inspired to create their own weapons to battle their way through oppression such as Terra M. Trans or Entrance Earth by Glober Roca, Lucia by Umberto Salas, Vidas Secas or Barren Lives by Nelson Pereira dos Santos, and many more films that aspire courage from their predecessor's success in popularizing the movement. But throughout the era, these filmmakers were marked with its Marxist aesthetics due to the relations of its ideology from different influences. From the apparatus theory, ideology is not imposed on cinema but is part of its nature. As for surplus value theory, their similarities lie from being an example consumer who buys goods on the open market while unconsciously contributing to the exploitations of the worker. Both Marxist theories similarly fall under the false consciousness of the spectator. As Jean-Louis Baudry quoted, film theory is metaphysical. Cinema is ideological because its mode of representation is ideological. Films are created to represent reality. His perspective of the cinema is that the movability of the camera, which creates this transcendental subject, is important for the viewers to invest in while viewing the film. Jafar Panahi published a recent film in 2011 after being banned from directing and editing. Ironically, he got to publish this film, This Is Not A Film, a struggle of his life after being found guilty creating propaganda against the regime by capturing interviews and communication on the outside world with his phone camera while under house arrest. This just shows how in today's generation, there are still artists that exist with difficulties from oppression, may it be through political or traditional treatment of abuse in modern generation, not just in Iran, but as well as one country representing foreign ideology in the film industry. Gerardo de Leon, a Filipino director, made a film, Ang the Igdig ng Mga Api, or The World of the Oppressed, in 1965, a lost treasure that would only be a memory in today's generation. It is a story of both oppression and hope as the young student who witnessed death, rape, discrimination, and suffering offers his life to become a lawyer to defend those who suffer from oppression and injustices around him. This film was bound to be a call to the audience during the era of election before the rise of Ferdinand Marcos, who is now known to be one of the ill-famed dictators of the history of the Philippines. Most of the third cinema films that are sampled are usually documentary. While Entrance Earth isn't, it's still considered to be a third cinema film. The film, while it seems similar to some French New Wave, or specifically Jean-Luc Godard's films, Globo Roca questions its audience politically whether the two political leaders that represents both oppositions that battles for power are morally right. Recently, a featured film called Jacqueline Comes Home is set into theaters and became viral after a throwback of the first film, or documentary, that tributes to the case of the Chi Young sisters. Both films have its own sets of truth, but which is more in line with the real truth? Now, maybe halfway through this video, you are now convinced that the montage that you have watched in the first part are all first and second cinema, but I've inserted some that are also applicable to be third cinema films. Maybe you haven't noticed because I changed the aspect ratio to make it look like the familiar picture you usually see in Hollywood films. It's a basic film language tool to make the image pleasing and give meaning to what it wants you to see. But also, it's the power of editing. Film is a process of discontinuity due to its manipulative cinematography and cuts from editing, but all in all is presented as one of organic unity. Humans are only limited to its senses to undergo history. Viewers are only allowed to watch, listen, gain, harness, contemplate, and theorize. But they are strictly viewed as a consuming entity of ideology in the eyes of the studio system. Third Cinema, in Manifesto, states that all films that adopt the first cinema model disseminate a bourgeoisie worldview. A world existence and historic process are enclosed within the frame of the screen inside of a cinema. I purposely wanted every film to be equal and treated as only a film in unity. 
that any cinema can be influenced and the goal that even with the formula of Hollywood can work combining the perspective of third cinema. Audiences will have a broader understanding of how the spectators could still view a film with the same principles whichever cinema movement is used. My point is that even if each definition of movement disregarded its predecessor, it still applies to some of the formulas and it works. I wanted to capture a world from the typical trend that the usual viewers don't often see. Cinema is a powerful medium in manipulating the mind of its viewers. Propaganda is not the only way to change one's standpoint, nor revolution. So if you're a filmmaker, will you be limited to these options? Whether your standpoint is set in revolutionizing or expressing, what would be the best way? Or will you go outside your comfort zone and create an entirely different kind of film? No matter you still direct your own decisions.